Welcome to the ninth episode of the Dragon Master Campaign. My name is Harrison Weiss, and I am the DM. So one thing you might notice is that this is actually a retake of this episode. So we're kind of going to be replaying some stuff, so you might see some leading questions from the party. So let's go ahead and enter our fact of the day. The prompt for today's fact is just a childhood memory. Hey, this is Harrison Clark. I play Art, a ranger who's a bit of a social outcast, has very little manners, but does have some very intense survival skills. Art's favorite childhood memory is of him getting his slingshot and uh, learning to hunt small game with it. Something that he picked up fairly quick, but mastered over many, many years of hunting and working alongside his uncle in his shop. Okay, I'm guessing it's me now. All right, so the name's Will, uh, William Brito, and I play as Loaf, a human wizard who enjoys pastries and using spells. Loaf's morals are subject to change depending on the circumstances. He believes nothing is true and everything is permitted. So, uh, childhood memory of Loaf's that uh, he remembers, I wouldn't say fondly, but he does remember, is his uh, dog Bernard got rabies. Uh, so his father uh, instructed him to put his dog down as a lesson it was more so that his father instructed him to keep watch of his dog, but his dog went off and came back with it and such. So so you're telling me that two characters in this campaign had to kill their childhood dogs? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Bernard <laughs> oh was his sheesh. dog. So. Oh, my gosh. Yours had a name. <laughs> he had a name. Hey, this is David Kelly. I play Yuri, the warlock of the group, who's obsessed with knowledge and how to attain it. Yuri's favorite childhood memory was the long nights he would spend reading under his covers with a little light. So where we left off was where you guys had just beaten Malphite to a bloody pulp, taken him to the town center, got him healed up, and then you went and found the Burkstone buried north of the city of Burke. So you guys have the stone in hand, and you guys are ready to decide what you want to do next. Yeah, y'all just want to go ahead and go to Carmine? Yeah, uh, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. You guys are going to head towards the Dragon School campus, and I assume you guys want to walk into the library, in which case you immediately see Hermione on the left side office, and she very happily greets you and says, Hey, did you guys did you guys find the stone? Did, did Malphite have it? Huh. Deja vu. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we found it. Oh, that's awesome. I th- appreciate it so very, very, very much. Can you give me the, the stone? I, yeah, I guess. I keep it this time, though. Yeah, it's weird that, you know. Sorry. Here. I just handled it. What are you talking about? I have no idea. It's just... Are you having more of those boozle beans? I, <laughs> it might be. It might be those. I don't know. Might be the boozle beans? <laughs> Uh, he picked some shrooms I in the forest at one point. I'm just saying, um, this feels similar. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, here, here you go. I hand a stone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, in return, what I was thinking was maybe you would like this book. I really appreciate the time that, that you spent looking for this stone. So here's a book. It's called The Secrets of the Abyss, that this would help you guys out. Maybe it has some good advice for you. Yeah, I'll, yeah, sure. I'll take it again, I think. Nope, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I dreamed that I saw this book. <laughs> That's what I mean. Ah, I see. I see. Maybe this time you won't delete the audio file. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, sorry. Obviously cut that out. All right, back in character. <laughs> jeez. Oh, yes, yes. Obviously cut, cut that out. That's amazing. <laughs> Was was there was was it was there anything else? I I don't <laughs> I I can't remember what we had discussed as as any kind of payment. I I like I do like the book. I do appreciate it. No, this was this. I don't think we had discussed any kind of payment. I know. I mean, this was this was really all I had in mind. I, I don't know if there was something else that you were particularly looking for. Uh, I do know actually. Uh, Gandalf was looking for art last night. He, he walked into the library and, and was looking for art. I don't know if you guys have gotten to talk to him yet, or maybe you should stop by his office. And maybe probably in the morning. It's it's getting a bit late. Okay, uh, DM. What time is uh, about? What time is it? I forget. It's been a. It's been two weeks since <laughs> our last episode. I'm gonna say it's 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 dark out okay. now. It's probably like eight eight to nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll meet up with him tomorrow then. That that sounds good. Cool. I bet I'm getting a trophy. Probably not. That Prob- might be it. That might be it. <laughs> yeah. 
Did you do something impressive? Uh, imp- I mean, imp- imp- impressive is a word. What if? What have I not done? <laughs> that I don't do anything that's not impressive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's well. It's been great. I I appreciate you guys' help. And were you guys planning to attend the IBS meeting tomorrow? The what? IBS. The IBS meeting. What's that? The irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> meeting? No, that's <laughs> oh, weird. What, what are you talking about? The IBS meeting. No, if you guys aren't a part of that club, then never mind. It's not a big deal. Uh, what? What? What is it exactly? I, I'm not familiar. Oh, it's 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 like a it's it's like a support group for the unfortunate. Ah, what do you mean? What 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 do you mean unfortunate? For the less fortunate. It's, yeah, yeah, the less fortunate. <laughs> it really is like a, it's it's genetics. It's not really anything you can do about it. I see. What are you what are you implying? That art is <laughs> just ugly. That he has a bad odor because he he's out in the woods all the time. I completely disagree with that statement you made. Uh, oh, thank I you. I see. <laughs> Yeah, it's my, guy. my apologies. My no, apologies. honestly, if it's a if it's a place for you know outcasts, I would I'd be willing to bet you know Yori probably should go. I wow. mean, half blood and all. I was going to defend you. I get, I get it. Okay, I get it. Oh, for, defend me for what? From from her accusations, her completely out well, of out of place I'm accusations. Saying, if it's a place for the like lowly and unlikely, sure. isn't that what you said? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking. I mean, it's it's definitely for the lowly and the not liked. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just thought Yori. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you fit in. I don't. Know. Oh. Okay. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you guys are welcome to ask around and see if you want to join that meeting. But <laughs> no worries if not. Were you guys? Did you guys hear about the smoke? Uh, we did not. I don't think. There's been uh, some s- several different reports about some smoke. It's the smoke's nowhere near us, but there's definitely there's definitely a, a lot of smoke in the distance. You can kind of see it, but we're just getting a lot of reports. And I know Stoics get pretty frantic right now. He probably could use your help. Okay. If you, if you were free this you know this five day and six day, it's it's, it's not the end of the um, week. It's yeah yeah. Today's fourth okay. day. Today is the end of fourth day. Mm. Does he want us to? help him now or like tomorrow we can, it's kind of late oh probably in yeah. the morning probably in the morning yeah it's getting late he's probably in bed already you know old men <laughs> we, we can talk to him tomorrow yeah. i think it'd be best if we went to bed time to okay. hit yeah, the old wooden good. floor if you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i'm just gonna roll my eyes sigh and walk out <laughs> y'all head back to the dorms and we'll pretty much just fast forward through this lo- long night's rest you guys wake up the next morning, and you guys are free to do whatever you want. Nobody wakes anybody up. So uh, we level I know, up. <laughs> um, so I, I don't think I ever actually announced that you guys hit level two on the podcast. Ah, okay. We're level two. No level up yet. All that loafing around, you know? That's what you do best, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, you guys have plenty of options of what you want to do this morning. You guys could go check out McDonald's. You guys could go head to Stoic's place, or you could maybe head to the administrative building if you guys wanted to go see Gandalf. I personally want to go to uh, McDonald's. I, I I need some some better armor. Well, I need to collect my trophy. Okay. Like I, I need to. I need. I mean, can we can we do that real quick on our way out? Yeah, we can. We can. We can go there first when it makes sense to come back. Yeah, I don't mean if if Gandalf's trying to give me an award, I want to make sure we're you know I don't want to keep him waiting. Like that's just weird. yeah. I'm... You, you... And I try very hard not to be rude. You and then uh, we could maybe check out and see what that irritable bowel society is. <laughs> it's probably it's yeah. Probably what Yori it's... was saying he wanted to go check it out, right? Yes, yeah, so we should do that for him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the. The, the the building. Okay, so y'all head into the <laughs> administrative building. You pass Panda Express on the right, and inside the administrative building, you see a desk. As soon as you walk in, and there's a small goblin behind the desk, and then and then there's several rooms in the back and like around the corner. So the desk is right here. There's several rooms around the corner, and the, all the doors appear to be closed. And Mike says, "Hello." What are you doing here on a uh, fives day? 
Hi, we we heard that uh, Gandalf needed some help. Uh, Hermione. Er- what does Gandalf need help with? Uh, we 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 don't know. Um, Hermione said he was looking for some help yesterday. Oh. It was pretty late, so we we decided to come back today. Oh. <laughs> I think it was the smoke. Is that what is that was? Is that what it was about? Gandalf's not responsible for the smoke. Was that stoic? It was stoic. Stoic was kind of yeah. That, that, stoic oh Yori, oh Yori. Let let's. But Gandalf let, needed I'll, help, I'll, right? I'll handle okay. this. I'll right. handle this. I'll handle this. <laughs> so Mike, Gandalf had a trophy for me, and I was coming to pick it up before we went and helped oh, Stoic. Right. Is he here? A trophy. He wanted. He wanted to talk to him. Yeah, stoic, he said he needed to see me, so I just assumed... Stoic wanted to talk to Art. <laughs> no, no, Gandalf. <laughs> no, Gandalf wanted to Gandalf talk to me. Gandalf wanted to talk to Art. To give me my trophy. I don't think it was a trophy. A trophy? Let me go Let me go check his office and see if there's a trophy in there. Oh, is Gandalf not no, here? Yeah, you do that. Gandalf's not here. He's somewhere else. Well, why are you here? Because I work here. Does Gandalf not work here? He does. Okay. Why is he somewhere else, then? It's five day. <laughs> So why did Gandalf say he needed to see me and then just decided to not be in his office? <laughs> did he say he needed to see you? I guess Hermione, Hermione did, did, but that was the assumption. Hermione I don't know. needed to see you? <laughs> did, he could probably find no, her in the library. That's, <laughs> no, God. that's not not what I said at all, actually. Um, I know I'm bad at the social thing, but like, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like there's some maybe miscommunication between Gandalf and his staff. I'm not pointing Let fingers. Let me check the trophy. <laughs> Let me go check for the trophy. Give me one moment. And he walks around back into Gandalf's office. Okay, out of game, I truly hope that Mike comes back with a trophy and it's just like one of Gandalf's. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. That's ridiculous. Uh, so is there any uh, anything that Loaf sees oh in the building that <laughs> yes. looks enticing enough to borrow for a long time, period of time? As soon as Mike walks out, Loaf is starting to look around. Go ahead and roll perception or investigation, either way. 14. 14, okay. So you see several different crates on your left, several different crates all just stacked up up high, and you see some items on the back table. One looks like a small box, some other ones are just some random items here and there. And then on Mike's desk, you see a ring. Hmm. Now, would I have to roll stealth while he's not in the room? Like, what if I were to swipe the ring? How far away is it from, like, within five seconds time? I'm going to say yes, but with a very low check. Okay. All right. Well, You're I'm going to, like, swipe. reach across the desk. You might fall over the desk, <laughs> you know, with your obesity. <laughs> I mean, I can just use my mage hand and grab the dang thing if I want to be real. If you want to play that, your obese card, I don't have to move at all. <laughs> Okay, do you want the ring? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you've snatched the ring from <laughs> from Mike's desk. Let me place the ring in your inventory. Don't have to play the Euro Beast card. You're the one who played it first. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, wa- yeah, Mike walks. Mike walks back out and says, "Hey, um, I think I found the trophy for you. Uh, what was your name again? His name's or- Yori. That's Art. Just name- Oh, Yori. Wait, who? The trophy's not for Yori. Trophy's for Art. Yeah. yeah. I'm Art. Okay, here's your trophy, <laughs> sir. And he lifts up a, a black, just a black rock. And says, here you go, sir. Art holds the trophy and starts tearing up. Are you sure there's not like a trophy back there for me, too? I'm pretty sure he mentioned, or Hermione mentioned something about <laughs> another trophy, you know. Are you, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought about it right now. I'm pretty sure there's another trophy back there. This is the only trophy back there. <laughs> you clearly weren't looking then. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, did I mess it up? Gandalf would not be happy with me if I messed it up. Yeah. Are you sure there's another one back there? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty darn sure, for oh sure. My god. Oh. Let you, me go look for another rock. You're not going to make him roll for that? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you've, con- you've convinced Mike. Yeah, <laughs> let me go check. Let me go check in the back for one more trophy. I think there's maybe one more. I think I also had one too. As he walks off, you had one too. <laughs> I, no, you didn't. I think. So. How, who were you to tell? 
Does Hermione didn't say anything about a trophy for you? I remember distinctly her saying that Lef, I had a do trophy. Do you remember yeah. Glory having yeah, a trophy? Lef, d- yeah, you remember? Uh, I, I remember. I, I remember when she said you had one. Mike is looking back and forth between the two of you. I would say I. I think he. Uh, <laughs> It was a. I think it was like a a medal. It was like a medal around the. You know, oh like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, now that Lopes has, you're right. Yeah, all right. A medal. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a medal. I'm it sorry, was, I was misspoken. It was a medal. Yeah. A medal. It's a type of uh, <laughs> type of trophy that's hung around the neck, and it's not a trophy, but it's a medal. <laughs> you know. Oh. One of those. Let me go see if I um, a medal. Yeah, it's yeah. super valuable too. Oh. <laughs> And that was for that was that was for me for 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 Yori for Yori yeah oh <laughs> uh, let me let me go check Gandalf's office for those trophies and medal I'll be right back and Mike walks as away. Mike walks away I look at the guys and go hey I wonder if we can get it, the sorting hat from him oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think so. It's like a sentient I mean, hat, isn't it? No, he's it's kind not. of like just giving us stuff, right? I think he'll. I think he'll wise like, up. I, I, like my trophy, yeah, like sure, but like you guys just got free stuff for no think, reason at all. I don't think Gandalf was going to give you a trophy. Quite honestly, I do not think he's going to give you a trophy. Uh, hello, hi. hi. Uh, I brought you a trophy. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, uh, loaf. Here's your here's your trophy, and he lifts up a rock for you. It's a white rock this time. Oh. Um, uh, this is, uh, the trophy I found labeled with your name in the filing, uh, cabinet. Um, well, I, I didn't see any medals. You didn't? Okay. Maybe, no. Maybe he, he has probably should go talk to Gandalf about that one. Yep. Yeah, uh, where, where can we find Gandalf? On, on the- uh, he's usually meeting with the high council on the weekends. Where are they? Um. Yeah, where do they normally meet? They meet in like a uh, mahogany town sometimes, and sometimes in the town hall uh, next to the Hatacomb in the north of Burke, and sometimes they meet at the Blackthorn Library. Okay. Well, I mean, now that I have my trophy, like, we don't really need to get see Gandalf anymore. Where are they meeting today? I mean, you don't know that information, like, specifically? No. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay. All right. Well, it was nice to see you folks. Um, I look forward to uh, next day of class. Yeah. 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 I just, like, sneak out. I just back out. Just kind of like... Where's my ring? All right. Bye. <laughs> I just, like, I, I, like, dive out the door by the time he, I hear him saying yeah, it. Yeah. I just... I'm, I'm, I'm already just out the door. Speed walking out. Okay. You guys are out the door. Uh, I... I'd like to to go to McDonald's, but we could check the town hall first, see if they're there. Yeah, let's let's do that. No, yeah, let's, yeah, let's go. I, now let's that Lowe said, out. you know, <laughs> I I think that's that's just what we need to do. I I gave two options. <laughs> you said yes. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, the one that you decided. Oh, okay. Then we're gonna make, we're gonna go to McDonald's first. Yeah, right. Me the, too. The we're gonna go. To the town hall. Sounds good. <laughs> That's a great decision, Loaf. All right. I hate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys will go ahead. And I guess you, I guess you guys go ahead and open the town hall door, which I think I've briefly described the town hall before. It's basically just the, there's a big lobby area as you enter, and then there's a clear, distinct like double doors. Um, is is there there? But there's nobody present currently. As you guys enter. Right outside of the double doors for that back room, there is a woman who's sitting there, and she seems to be doing some paperwork. I'm going to kind of walk up to her and be like, Hi, uh, hello, is is the council meeting here today? We heard that uh, Gandalf needed some help yesterday, so we were trying to track him down. Oh, yes, the council is here today. You have both Stoic and Gandalf in this back room. Oh, okay. Uh, when's, when is their meeting in? I don't, I don't really want to intrude too much. Yeah, so their meeting should be over in the next five to ten minutes. They're currently deciding on some different things regarding the black smoke. So oh. I walk that way. Uh, where in the back room, right? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna walk over. He's gonna walk to the double doors. Yeah, I'm just gonna open it up. Go ahead and roll strength. Oh, strength! My word! What? The, oh God! Okay, well, it is seven. 
The doors do not open. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. These doors are pretty heavy. Hey, uh, you guys actually, you have like five to ten minutes before those doors will unseal. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Why are they sealed? Because there's a very high council meeting going on right now. All right, fine. So just go ahead and grab a seat, and you can grab a little booklet that's all, uh, on the counter. You can participate in the Stoic Market if you like. Oh, is is that is that happening today? Like, now? Oh, yeah, the Stoic Market is, is an ongoing event during the two weeks of school. It's where you can do some betting on children and whether they're going to pass the, pass the university or not. That is very strange. Oh, okay, so basically... Every student has a number associated with them and, and if they're going to graduate. If they're like at 100, then you have to bet 100 gold pieces to earn 100 gold pieces if you're right. So net 200 or? So yeah, yeah. So you, so it'd be net 100. You gamble 100 to get 200 <laughs> if you if you win. That's that, Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what net means. So then you would net 100. No, you, like your net total would be 200, right? You think you are like a professional when it comes to this <laughs> stuff? Are you familiar with the Stoic Market? Or I, was, I so, was talking to the DM. <laughs> so why, wait, why is my number so low, the 63? What's the deal with that? Oh, that's because they don't think you're going you're gonna to pass. Oh. Why don't they think that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they clearly, they're clearly just jealous of my, uh, my moderate efforts to pass. Whoa, 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 Loaf, you see Malphite score? Oh. oh that's How? that's all right. That's BS. We're gonna we're gonna have to right? find him. We're, we're gonna mad have at to that, teach right? him a, we're gonna have to teach him a lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna teach Stoic a lesson? What? No. no why is, why no. is Stoic? Malphite, he's a punk. <laughs> I'm not, not talking oh. about Stoic. No. Oh, that's fine then. You seem to have a lot of <laughs> papers lying around. Uh do you want yeah, a pa- do you want a paperweight? Here. Sure, that'd be great. <laughs> I just I dropped the trophy on one of the papers. It's like here you All go. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you. We would that that would be really helpful. Actually, we would the paperweights would be great. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a copper piece for mine. Okay, I'd, that's fine. I'd say it's worth the silver, don't you think? <laughs> for that rock, I would take it for a silver. That that's a beautiful black rock. I mean, I think so, but I was trying to cut you. I'll take silver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank you. Cool. Well, here you go. Awesome, thank you very much. All right. (laughs) That puts me up to ten silver pieces. So, as you guys... You guys now have the stock market tracker, so you guys are welcome to gamble on any of the students. You you would just provide the money to this wonderful woman. And (laughs) this is... Actually, I think I've already gone over the important parts, and you guys have already talked about some of the numbers for people that you know. So, what if I were to gamble as much as possible that I could possibly do on me failing? Oh, Could I failed. also gamble on? So if I fail... So you're actually not allowed to gamble on anybody within your class. Oh, that sucks. Sorry. Ugh. I'd gamble on myself hardcore. <laughs> you right. could gamble on Malphite. On him to lose? I you mean, could, we, yeah. we could make it happen. But We, we you, could make yeah, sure he could. doesn't show up you, for the you exam. You might even like fight him in the combat class final <laughs> exam. Uh, be able to knock him out, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's one way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, oh. one way to one way to do it. Oh my god! And the sealed doors now open wide, and Gandalf, Stoic, and uh, n- another person that you don't recognize all walk out of the back room. Gandalf wa- looks over and says, "Oh, hey, Art, I need to speak with you. You have a second? No, I already got my trophy. I'm good. <laughs> uh, okay. So he walks over and he puts this compass into your hand. Here you go. This was left by your uncle Gildor." My uncle? Yeah, your uncle. Art throws it back at Gandalf. Oh, whoa, whoa, what? I want nothing to do with this. I only have one uncle, and he was a terrible person. Why would I want this? Who are you talking about? Your uncle, Gildor. I don't have an uncle, Gildor. He stopped by and wanted me to give this to you. He said that it was important. I think you're talking about my uncle. Gildor. You're not even elf. You must be. I don't have an uncle, Gildor. It it could have been mine. Uh, I I have a. You have an uncle Gildor. I have a lot of extended family. Uh, I I I really I don't know. I didn't know you had an uncle Gildor Yildian. Huh. <laughs> what? Okay. I, I'm not understanding this. I have one uncle, and his name is Albert. Albert's brother is Gildor, right? 
That that makes him your no. other uncle? No. My uncle's brother was my father, Thomas. I think there's a third one in there. So I think you just need to go ahead and <laughs> just take this compass. If I mean, it's it's up to you what you do with it. But I, he instructed for listen, me to give this to you. If my upbringing taught me anything is that my uncles don't care about me. And clearly, if this guy has just shown up now in my life, he obviously doesn't care. So why would I want this from him? <laughs> um, that is, I mean, I guess that's a fair question to ask. I, I was, I was going to say, I can, I can hold on to it, keep it safe for him. That's fine. I, I honestly, I don't think I care. <laughs> just, I don't. I, it's why, it's, why, it's, why even like it has no value. It has, there's nothing, no reason that I would want this in my life. I'll get rid of it. I promise. I'll take it. You know what? Just do whatever you want. I okay. I take fine. it. I, I don't want to see it. Keep it away from me. All right, Yori. I will give it to you instead. But I delivered it to Art officially. Yep. Just. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, well, you guys have a nice day, and it was good to talk to you, Stoic. You have a nice day as well. And Gandalf walks out, and Stoic turns to you guys and says, Oh, hey, guys, I think, were you guys looking to do a quest for me? I, I could definitely use your help. With this black smoke going on, I don't have any time to go to Mahogany Town. I could really use you guys. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely up for it. There's an Archmage in Mahogany Town. His name is Valakut. I could really use your guys' help to find him. I, he's, not, he's not really replying to my, to my echoes, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. So I really, if you guys could just go speak to him and tell him to contact me as soon as possible, that would be a huge help. Sure. Uh, is, just, just wondering because of how quests normally work, is there any kind of payment or like a reward or anything? I see. You need money? Yeah, and travel expenses too. If if we're going travel all the way. expenses, that's a good idea. College school is expensive, man. Yeah, you're yeah you, yeah you're totally right. Let me see. Let me. Uh, how about I give you guys like uh ten gold pieces? This should help buy the bright bloom seeds you need to go in the dark below, and that that should that should help you out to ten, get to Mahogany Town. Ten total. Yeah. What about that guy? Like, do we just say, like, hey, come with us? How are we going to entice him with a few gold? So you're not going to entice him with any money. He, I just need to know he's safe. So you guys are just going to go see it, go check him out and make sure he's all right and tell him to contact me. Because he was supposed to be here for this high council meeting and he wasn't. What if he was just ignoring your call or echo? Well, maybe that's what it is. And I, so, I guess I just need to know that. Art raises his hand. Okay, <laughs> Art. Mr. Stoic, sir, um, Professor of Stoic, uh, what what do you what do you prefer? Anyways, we're getting off track. Um, so I'm just uh, just thinking out loud here. Is that a baby if, Rumblehorn? Yeah. Have you not Have you not met my baby Rumblehorn? I haven't. Stoic. His name's Hogarth. He's so cute. Look at oh him. Oh my gosh, he is adorable. Oh, oh my goodness. Do you? What's your dragon, Stoic? My dragon. My dragon's named Skull Smasher. Skull Smasher. Skull Man. Smasher. Is, is he around? I'd love to see him. Yeah, he's actually out back. I, I, I could show you him. Yeah, look, can you... Skull Smasher! And Skull Smasher runs around out front and like just knocks the front door off the hinge. And a giant rumble horn walks in the building. And Stoic runs over, gives him a hug, and headbutts him. <laughs> Art runs up and gives him a hug and headbutts him. But it, like, kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> One damage? <laughs> yep. <laughs> one damage, one damage. I'm down with that. This is my rumble horn. Sorry, I interrupted oh, you when you were saying he's something. So, he's so big. Oh look, Hogarth, look, look this look how big you're gonna be. Uh back to back to what I was uh, saying. <laughs> so um you prefer to be called Professor. No, I'm I'm not a professor. I'm definitely not a professor. You can call me Chief. Oh. Chief, Chief, Chief. chief. Okay, Chief. chief. Okay. Chief. So uh Chief. I was just thinking, Ma Mahogany Town's kind of far, right? And if we were gonna, you know, go to Mahogany Town, wouldn't it be faster to fly? <laughs> That's a point, actually. I'm just saying, and and honestly, Stoic, uh, you know, as a student who has a rumble horn, I think it would benefit me to kind of <laughs> have some on-the-job training, you know, kind of a work-based learning type mentality? Hmm. I, I, I'm not sure I could part ways with my Skull, skull Smasher. I don't I mean, know. If it's, I, uh, could, I, mean, I don't know if I could like, go, go a day without him. 
ever since I lost my my wife. Jeez. He's all that I have left. Well, Him and Hiccup. We can help you find her. How? Uh, I, no, I don't, I don't think I don't, know, I don't think he's implying that. Uh, so, how how far would the flight be there to so the Mahogany? You could take the midnight train, and that's about a 30-minute drive. But you probably, if you flew, it would probably be about 45 to 60 minutes. Train's faster than a dragon? The train is faster than, than my that's, rumble horn. That's true. That's canon? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just canon. <laughs> just canon. Cannons okay. are even faster. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I do have a cannon in the back, you guys. I mean, oh, Yori's kind of like, he's got the, he's got the build for cannons. I, you, Hick, what do you think, you know, Yori? Hiccup, he builds, he builds these little wing suits that he can fly with the cannon and, and, you know, it's kind of crazy. All the way to Mahogany Town? No, he gets halfway, then he falls. <laughs> oh, jeez. Then his dragon toothless just catches him, and they're good, you know. Okay. Dragons. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I think you guys are probably best off in the midnight train. It's actually a little bit faster than the than the dra- than my rumble horn here. Their rumble horns are not the fastest dragons. They're especially Skull Smasher here. He's just massive. Well, all right, Chief, we're out of here. Sweet. Right. So if you guys need any bright bloom seeds, um, feel free to stop by Valka's Tavern. It's our old place, and uh, they. They have a special going on with Bright Bloom Seeds. You can get, like, five for, like, two gold pieces there. So, does the train have first class? Uh, yeah, so the the first place class in the in the school gets gets to sit in the front row. That's right. Trackers are currently winning. Ah, cool. Awesome. That's us. You didn't give us the 10 gold. Oh, my apologies. And he, and he reaches Each. in his pocket and grabs you 10 gold. Each. Each. No, no, no. no. I, I, I think 10 gold is plenty, right? What do you think, Art? Ten, ten gold total, or three each? I mean, Loaf typically likes his own money. You said three each? <laughs> yeah, three each would work, right? No, that's no. that's really bad math. Let's. I'll take it. <laughs> Here's three gold for you, Art. Thank you. Okay, you guys, you guys have a, ha, enjoy your trip to Mahogany Town. Make sure you make sure you visit all the sites. There's lots of fun we, things no, to wait, do in Mahogany we, Town. We agreed on ten. Uh, they, it was them saying. You're the man, each. Chief. I. And then he hands the other two of you three gold pieces each as well. <sighs> All right. <laughs> <sighs> all right, all right, all right. And Stoic uh, walks <laughs> out of the room. So what we could do is we just need to find Malphi, right? And then just, we'll bet against him, uh, you know, taking the, you know, passing, right? And we'll just beat him up really hard on the day before and tie him up and leave him somewhere so he misses the final and we'll be rich out of game question yep i see on the thing that astrid is in the stoker class that's a different girl named astrid okay it's another astrid okay. it's not the house mom it, there's lots of astrids okay okay <laughs> sure someone's named right. grayson yeah that dude's a jerk look at him 150 yeah that's a name grayson. <laughs> whoever that yori is too that's crazy Okay. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'd I'd like to, to go to McDonald's now. Okay, so y'all y'all wanna head south. So you wanna pass through the market and head south towards uh McDonald's. While we're while we're going through the market, does anything stick out? Anything cool looking? Go ahead and roll a D one hundred for me. D one hundred. Can we all do it? Sure. Sixty. Yori sees a vendor selling a particular ring that glows blue. It's, it's a silver ring that glows blue. Cool. Okay. I got a 59. With a 59, Art sees a blade that that is particularly intriguing. I, uh, I rolled a 34. Loaf, you also see a, a, a strange looking blade. It's a different blade, but it's also pretty strange looking. Oh, okay. I Well... I'd I'd like to to stop at the ring and and uh, kind of interact with the guy, see what he's see what he's selling. Okay, so you guys walk up to this to the vendor right on the side over here, and she says, "Hello, how are you doing today?" I'm I'm good. Uh, that that ring, it's it's just calling to me. Like, what's what is it? How much is it? Like, can you tell me a bit about it? Uh, yeah. So I usually sell these these gray rings for about ten gold pieces. Ten. They it's pretty. Yeah, it's 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 very pretty. I appreciate you saying that. And the ring too, right? 
Um, but this is this is a very special ring. It usually has some kind of interaction with water. Sometimes it lets you breathe underwater. Sometimes it lets you walk on water. This you know it has a lot of different water effects. Okay, interesting. I feel like ten is a bit too steep for me, unfortunately. But are you here pretty frequently, or or how often? I'm here pretty frequently. Yeah. Okay. I might come back for that. That's that's a very interesting. While you're here, I want to go ahead and show you this other blade that I have that looks really intriguing that the other guys saw. (laughs) (laughs) It's the same vendor. Same guy. Yeah, so this is actually my key blade. I sell it for uh, typically about five gold pieces, and it's a very powerful weapon. Key blade. Does this interest any of you guys? This is a very powerful bludgeoning weapon. And it, while while held, you can kind of uh, hurl threats at people and, and cause damage that way as well. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I don't think so. Not for me, unfortunately. And it's a finesse weapon for anybody interested in that. Oh. How much, funny man? Five gold pieces. You interested? Nope. I'll take it. you take five it? five gold pieces on the table. Perfect. <sighs> Beautiful. Thank you very much. Keyblade. A weapon worth five gold pieces. Melee. Finesse. While equipped, you can cast Vicious Mockery twice per long rest. Damage 1d8 bludgeoning. Vicious Mockery, you unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantments at a creature you can see within range. The target can hear you, though it need not understand you. It must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll. It makes before the end of its next turn. Whoa. And it scales with your level. Yeah, it's a very cool spell. Whoa. You, you become a troll. <laughs> Keep and it's 1d8 bludgeoning? Is it one-handed? It is one-handed. Oh my gosh! Five <laughs> gold pieces? Out of game. What does finesse benefit me? I know it does, but I don't know why. A finesse weapon lets you use your dex modifier or your strength modifier rather than just your strength modifier. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So realistically, I'm doing... Potentially 11 damage instead of 8 with that. Yeah. You have a plus 3 on dex. Yes, I do. Cool. So you guys have purchased a keyblade. So y'all keep walking towards McDonald's. You guys are going to pass the Burke Inn stocks on your right. And then on your left is the Valkus Tavern. And then as you guys enter the McDonald's, you see... You actually walk straight into the Don's Armory portion of McDonald's. So you're straight into the armory, and the man behind the counter immediately says, Hey, welcome to Don's Armory and the McDonald's franchise. I have lots of wares for you guys to see, and is there anything that you guys are looking for in specific? You, like, you guys looking for swords? You guys looking for armor? Uh, I was I was looking to replace uh, my my armor here, actually. Yeah, so we have, we have some really good armor here. We have some cloth armor, some leather armor, some midget armor. Anything in particular that you're looking for? You said midget armor? Midget armor, yes. W- will that will that fit somebody of, 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 of my stature? or? Yeah, I think it'll fit just fine. Okay. I mean, you're not a midget. Yeah, you don't have <sighs> to be a midget to put it on. Your belly button might stick out a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, all right. I'll, uh, how, how, how much is it? Uh, we, we typically sell it for three gold pieces. Okay, no, 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 no deals for today. No deals for today. Okay, yeah. Then Not in McDonald's. <laughs> awesome. Our uh, prices are steep, our wares are steeper. I see. <laughs> I'll take that then. Cool. Awesome, thank you very much. And, and you guys exchange the the things? Yes. I'm also kind of looking to replace the sword. I'm not exactly sure with what. What do you... What do you what do you suggest? What do you, what do you have in stock? We definitely have some javelins. We have this battle axe. We have a bone splitter, a dwarven hammer. There's a couple different options. The brawler's gloves I'm interested in. Oh, the brawler's gloves. We do have those in the back. Let me go grab a pair of those. And he goes back to the back room and he comes back out with two brawler's gloves. Yeah, those those look awesome. And uh, they're 15 gold? Or 15, yeah, 15 so there's silver? 15 silver each. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so you yeah. can... You can get the two for three, three gold pieces. I will. I'll take you up on that. Awesome. Here you go. Trades the gloves for three more gold pieces. Midget mail. It's an armor worth three gold pieces that gives plus two to your AC. And while worn, you get an additional plus one AC if you are shorter than four feet tall. And two brawler's gloves. A brawler's glove 
is a handware melee weapon that has plus two attack. You can attack with Brawler's Glove as a bonus action if you have attacked with another handware weapon this turn. Damage 1d6 bludgeoning, and it is worth 15 silver pieces. I think I'm just about good. Do you guys want anything when I look around? No, I'm good. I don't really have any money left. Well, Yeah, I'm kind of low on funds as well. Alright, sounds good. Well, if you have anything else that you're interested in, you can always stop by the Don's Armory and come check it out. Awesome. Uh, well, actually, you know, let me let me ask you something real quick. I've got this pair of daggers here. Alright. Do you have any interest in purchasing these? Yeah, I could probably pick up a dagger or two. Okay. These are actually elven. Yeah. These are elven daggers. Yeah. Yeah, I would love I I'd love to pick these up off of you. How about a uh, silver piece for the both? Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, sweet. Perfect. If if you if you like elven stuff, my my sword here that I'm actually looking to replace is is an elven sword. Yeah, I'd buy that off of you. How much are you looking for? I'd say about 2 gold pieces. About 2 gold pieces. I'll give you 1 and a half. 1 and 7 silver. 1 and 6 silver. Got yourself a deal. Shake his hand. Beautiful. And he shakes your hand right back. It looks like you guys are getting all suited up and equipped for some some from some, some fighting. Are you guys going anywhere? Doing anything special today? Uh, uh yeah, we're 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 set on a task, a chore, if you ask me. But yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. My uncle, my uncle's super strict on me. I got like got a lot to do here at the at the store. Man, cleaning out cleaning out the vault today and really just dusting everything off. It's crazy. All right then. All right, then. You guys have a nice day. Sounds like you're leaving. Thanks. Yeah. See ya. So you guys head on out. (laughs) That's so awkward. (laughs) Let's go to Valka's Tavern and get some bright balloon seeds. Yeah. So you guys walk into Valka's Tavern and you guys see some uh, a lady behind the counter and several people uh, sitting at the bar all the way around the center of the room. You see a group in the Back opposite corner, you see a group of people in black hoods sitting around a table. In the front left corner, you see some people with some large musket-shaped weapons sitting on the table in front of them. And then in another corner, you see somebody with a dark brown hood just kind of chilling in the corner facing the, a little fireplace. Other than that, you see several just random commoners th- around the counter, and in the center, you see a woman who's bartending, and it's definitely noisy, and lots of people are talking over each other, and there's lots of lots going on. I'll walk up to the front counter and say, yeah, we, we were talking to somebody, I don't remember exactly who, I'm sorry. They said you had a special on Bright Bloom Seeds today? Yeah, 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 we definitely have a special for Bright Bloom Seeds, as you see her pouring some drinks for some other people. And she says, yeah, 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 we don't, we totally have some Bright Bloom Seeds for sale. We sell five for two or we sell two for one. I'll take the five for two gold pieces. Awesome. Here you go. And she, and she reaches down to the center, con- like console area, and she grabs out five Bright Bloom Seeds and she sticks them in your hand. Bright Bloom Seeds are about the size of like a small fist. Uh, is there anything else you want to do in here? You want to head on towards the midnight train? I certainly ain't walking. Yeah. No. Cool. Uh, you're currently walking i ain't walking all the way over there it's already hard enough for me to walk all the way over here oh i'm sorry i misunderstood are you calling him fat art listen yori i understand that you're jealous of loaf and i's relationship (laughs) this is why you need to go to ibs (laughs) oh my god (laughs) loaf if by any means you thought i called you fat please no i would never no you just know that i don't like walking Exactly. That's... Like I'm I'm just trying to have a legitimate conversation with my best friend. <laughs> it's okay, just forgive him. He uh he just misinterpreted it. Well, what what can you do? You're right. You're right. Yori, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and head towards the midnight train. And so you guys are going to go over to the tunnels. <laughs> So you guys are going to head on over to the tunnel and descend into the dark below. 
I can't tell if David's saying I hate you to me or to Art. It's, it's both. <laughs> it's both currently. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and descend into the dark below. Who wants to go down the ladder first? I'll start going down first. So as a brief idea of what's going on here is there's a tunnel near the Western Island Path entrance where that has a ladder going straight downward. It is completely dark. There is no light to be seen anywhere except for some cracked bright bloom seeds that you see walking around down below. Okay. Probably in the hands of people, not just walking by themselves. <laughs> um, I see. So you guys are heading down the down the down the ladder, and you you are you are about a hundred feet straight down, and you have entered a pitch black area that is a magical darkness. It's so. Even if you have night vision, you won't be able to see through it. Dark vision. <laughs> I'm going to crack one of the bright bloom seeds and uh, kind of hold it out and, and see which way we should be heading. So the bright bloom seed gives you about 10 foot radius of sight. As the light illuminates, our jump scares Yori and says, boo. Go ahead and roll intimidation. <laughs> should it be opposed to something else? Or? That is... Yeah, you can do an opposed. I rolled a one. Nice. Oh, you definitely did not scare him. It was delayed by about two seconds. Oh, the, the scare was delayed? Yeah, yeah. You didn't say boo until after it was fully lit. That's amazing. Art, I could smell you before you even got close to me. And I just turn around and, we'll keep, and walk away. <laughs> you guys are able to see a sign that is at the base of this tunnel that points directly south that says Midnight Train on the sign. Uh, that, I'll, I'll, I'll start heading the way that it's pointing. Pretty quickly, you run into a wooden building, and it seems to be p pretty clearly labeled as the Midnight Station. It, as you walk into the Midnight Station, there is a campfire in the center of the Midnight Station. On the left-hand side, there's a big area for where a train or like a subway would, would pull up. And on the right-hand side, the entire outside of the square building, there is a bench attached to the wall that people are sitting on. There's a couple people here, not that, not too many, and but the fire does not extend very far in the light. But you, everybody seems to be holding a bright bloom seed. Okay. So you're able to see these faces. Okay. Is there anybody? I guess it's dark, so we don't really pick out much. But anybody by the fire that looks interesting enough to talk to yeah so there's the there's one person by the fire and they're wearing they're wearing a black hood and they seem to have their hood completely covering their face you could talk to them if you wanted hey so uh what's what's the reason you're taking this train where, where are you going person i'm headed to mahogany town to see my family oh this is my first weekend away from home in a while what do you do uh, I'm currently at Dragon School. Oh, I don't recognize you. What's your name? My name is Ghibli. Nice to meet you. And he reaches his hand out. I guess I shake it, yeah. So I reach out and shake it. I guess I was uninitiated. So you're missing your family or something? Yeah, it's a, it's it's tough being away from the family, you know? Yeah. But at least I have this dragon egg. Oh, yeah, mine hasn't hatched either, so. Yeah, we're almost, we're, th they should hatch any day now. Uh, yeah, I would hope. If they're going to hatch. If they're going to hatch? You seem pretty uh, worried that it's not going to hatch. I'm a little bit worried myself. I'm not I'm not the best father, I don't think. Oh. That, that, is a, that is a can of worms. I didn't know that. You've noticed my can of worms here. Oh, yeah. I'm very perceptive. Baby dragons love worms. Does your rumblehorn dragon want some worms? Heck yeah, man. Hogarth <laughs> loves worms. Pushes the can over to Hogarth to, to eat some worms. And Hogarth eats the worms. Mm. All of them. That's a good boy, Hogarth. And I scratch him under the chin. And I, gr I grab his head and do a light head bump. Aww. As the train gets into a certain range, you start to hear it, and it picks up and picks up and continues to eventually crawl to a halt directly in front of you. And people step out, all holding their own bright bloom seeds. 10 to 12 people all exit the train, and they all walk from the direction that you just came. And somebody walks out of the front and says, Welcome to the Midnight Train. I am your conductor. Welcome. Our next stop is Mahogany Town. All aboard for Mahogany Town. And as the train starts to drive away, you hear a faint music in the background. Oh my gosh. 
He's just a small town boy. Oh my god. <laughs> Living in the bird skirts. <laughs> he took the midnight train going anywhere. I'm just dumb. <laughs> How has the music major not put this together? Will immediately knew it. Because I said midnight train last week and he was like, uh, going anywhere. I cannot believe I didn't put it together. And this episode was voiced by Harrison Clark as Arts, William Brito as Loaf, David Kelly as Yori, and edited and DM'd by Harrison Weiss. Please follow us on X at Tides of Terragos or on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tides of Terragos. Is it humid in Burke? Ugh.